What it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another 239 Flies installment. Today we are going to whip up one of my very favorites, the ND Seaver. Uh, when I was first starting to tie flies, uh, I could not, for the life of me, get the hackles married together and on the hook shank to look worth a damn. So I just decided to give up and tie it with ostrich and, uh, you know, talking about the deceiver pattern and um, just kind of dubbed it the end deceiver. Never really thought it would be on a video that we'd be making that I would show you how to tie at the time that I started tying it, but shit, here we are. So without further ado, let's do it. We're gonna start out with our Daiichi 2546 size two. You can tie this fly on a lot of different hooks, just choosing to tie it on this one today. Um, when I'm throwing these at giant world record tarpon, I would throw them on something else, but since I really don't throw at giant world record tarpon, I don't have to worry about that. Starting this off with a uh, Danville 210 flat wax in bonefish pink in super sexual bonefish pink. Put a little thread ball there. And then I got some ostrich open. I didn't, I wasn't gonna open a brand new one for the video. It's just waste not, want not. But I also wanted to show you something too. Like you've got this super inconsistent feather right here and you've got this beautiful feather right here. Well, it was beautiful before I, before I, you know, tied some flies on it. But what you can do is if you have two feathers together that don't exactly match up, to stretch them out, you just kind of match up some ends. And that way, if the feathers are different on one and different on the other, and you tie 12 flies, all of your flies are gonna look the same because they have the same feathers in them. So we'll start off with a little bit. Maybe I'm not gonna count them, but maybe 20 or 30. I'm just gonna pull out this super long guy. I'll pull out this super long guy too. And just save them. And then we're gonna tie them in at the back of the hook shank, like so. And then we'll take these long guys, match up the tips. And just put them in there. You don't have to be that, that frugal with them. You can, you can just pitch them, but I'm kind of frugal with them. And just make sure that they're on top like that. All right, we're good there. Trim off this excess here. Next, we're going to grab our flashaboo. Since we're tying it in white, we're going to use the pearl. And we're going to grab maybe eh, two or three or four strands. Nothing crazy. We're going to find it, put it over the, over the bobbin like so. Tie it in on top. Gonna crank that down. And then we're going to trim it, maybe just a little bit longer than the ostrich. And then we're going to do it again. I'm going to do these. I'm just going to grab a little bit more this time. Maybe an inch on both feathers. Oh yeah. That'll be good. You do kind of use a lot of ostrich for this fly. And we're just going to put it on top again. Tie it in. We're going to tie it in just in front of the other batch of ostrich. So it does kind of stick up like so. That other little front ramp of ostrich just kind of gives it a little, little volume. We'll grab our stragglers here.
yes, I'm literally tying in two extra feathers, but again, it's just, it's how I roll. All right, I'm gonna trim that again. I'm gonna grab another batch of this Flashaboo. And you can tie it straight down the center again, or, you know, um, I like to kind of switch this up and tie it because we're going to put some crystal hackle down the center. I like to kind of stretch these down the side, but you don't have to if you don't want to be that anal about things. We need some crystal flash. Yeah, I try to leave this stuff in the container because it definitely makes cleanup a little bit easier. But grab two strands, fold it over, cut it in half, so now you got four strands. Hashtag math. Fold it around your bobbin again, and this you're going to tie on top. And don't trim it all the same length. You know, don't make it look super manufactured. Just kind of get in there and do it kind of individually. Next, we are ready for our deer hair. Got plenty of room there. We're looking good. It's real simple, easy. It does not require too many brain cells. None of our flies are really building rockets for. Get you your bucktail. Since we're tying the white one, we're using, yep, you guessed it, white. And you're going to grab a little bit, maybe the diameter of about mm, half a pencil, quarter of a pencil, somewhere in that ballpark. Tie a couple of them. You'll figure out how much of it you need. Flip this over. And then just split it with the hook shank, or the hook point. And then tie it on. You don't want to go too far down the eye of the hook yet. You want to leave you some room, because we're going to do something. And you want that room for the head of this fly. Off of this bucktail, we know that it's a little bit thin which is nice to work with, except for the fact that it doesn't cover very well. So we just need a little bit more of it this time. Now that we know. And so we'll grab a piece maybe the size of a pencil. In time, just tie a couple of these. You'll figure out how much bucktail you need. And a lot of it will change on which bucktail you have. It's a natural material, so there's going to be some, there's going to be some variance. All right, now we're going to tie this on top of it. And we're going to wrap our thread back to where the thread stopped on the other one. Make sure we got it covered. While it's still kind of on there and a little loose, you can kind of work it with your fingers and get it together. You can also use white thread up until the point where you tie in the bucktail, but sometimes I just I like to use the pink thread because it does kind of shine through a little bit when the fly gets wet. It just adds a little something, you know. We're going to grab the front like this, and pull the skirt up, and we're going to trim on an angle like so. This is why we didn't trim the bottom originally because we want these to match up. We want them to be very similar. And be careful not to cut your thread, as I've already started to do. And then we'll go on the sides and do the same thing. And we're just trimming those fray edges into a taper. You don't want to cut them in a straight line like this. You want to cut them at an angle and make you a taper. And then, just going to work your way down. And you're going to build up the head of this fly with your thread. 
Just working your way back and over, mainly back. And you do this a couple of times, it's actually very easy to do. Practice it a couple of times, you'll, you'll be a pro at it. We can whip finish this. Uh, next we'll grab our handy dandy lighter. And we're just going to singe off the little hairs that got caught up. All right, next, this is not required, but it is definitely optional to grab some pink hardhead to go over top of these pink threads. Oh, it's stuck together. And this is just going to make your fly look a little bit better when it's done. Uh, this stuff's getting old. I tell I don't use this color very much. Just another form of bulletproofing. And it's going to help level out the thread. So when you go and you put the uh, UV thick head on there, it's going to really level out and look nice. You're not going to see the the individual threads. You're just going to see you're just going to see the the head as a whole as opposed to individual threads. This stuff's a little chunky. I've let it sit for a little too long. But be careful not to get this into the ostrich or the deer hair as it will kind of slide into it. But grab you some glitter. This is just some extra fine glitter from the, uh, from the craft store. And then just kind of hold it up. We're going to get the little, we just need the small Parmesan hole. And just kind of dust it. Just kind of dust it over the head and then just kind of push it in. So, all right, next we're gonna put our eyes on here. And these are the Hairline Dubbin fluorescent fly eyes in 1 8 inch or three millimeters for you uh, metric folk. Get that eye on there like such. Flip your vise over. We're going to do the same. Make sure they're lined up. They are. All right. Last step. You're going to take this thick, and what you're going to do is you're just going to put a little bit right at the edge of the eye to begin. Don't go too crazy. Just enough to hold it in place. Actually, that's too much. So we're going to take a little bit of it from over there. And we're going to put it up against this eye. And all that is to do is to hold these eyes in place while we get in there. Now we can go ham. This is Loon UV Thick. You need the thick for this. The thin and the flow will not suffice. And unless you have a dryer, the hardhead uh, will be time consuming. So get you a bottle of thick if you want to tie this fly. We'll probably include it in the kit, to be honest with you. And just start putting it on this baby. Okay. And now work it with your bobbin over the fly eyes and then back to cover all the thread. This is going to be another one of those things where you're just going to have to do it a time or two to kind of figure out how much you need. How much is too much? 
But the nice thing about it is you could always put more on relatively easily, but it is a little more difficult to take off. You can take it off, but you just keep putting it on as you need it to cover stuff. And it's thick enough that it stays in place. And you just got to make sure that you go over the eyes of the hook and you're going to take it all the way to the thread, the thread line. And then just make sure that you've got this stuff kind of balled up in the middle. Let it kind of level out. And then after you give it a few spins and it levels out, hit it with the light. And keep it spinning just for a minute and let it set. And then after it's kind of set up, you can get in there and smash it down. And this is a hell of a fly. I mean, this is snook candy. This is tarpon candy. This is redfish candy. This is everything that eats a small white bait fish. This is a dock light pattern. This is a beach pattern. This is a mangrove pattern. This is a everything eats this pattern. If you're trying to catch it on a fly rod and it eats stuff, I mean, I'm thinking of a very few exceptions like grass carp, milkfish, I mean, just anything that is a predator, game fish is going to eat a small white bait fish. And this is a small white bait fish.